Hi, welcome back. I'm Melissa Muir. One of the most requested videos that I receive is how to use the hammer hand piece. Now I already have a number of videos out there, but I figured I would just go ahead and show you guys one more time. So first thing we're going to do is we need to select our hammer hand piece. In this case, I have two of them. One has the duplex spring and one is without. I really like to use mine with a duplex spring. It helps to remove some of that pressure off of the flex shaft itself. However, you don't ever want to go more than 30 degrees on this. And another thing to note is that the duplex spring is not under warranty because it can break pretty easily due to misuse. If you are running this and you're doing more than a 30 degree bend on here, it's going to break on you. And so what I would suggest if you like to have the duplex spring is to get the duplex spring adapter. And that allows you to change any handpiece whatsoever into one that has a duplex spring. And now if that duplex spring happens to break, then you can either just buy a new one and attach it to your handpiece again, but then there's not a whole lot lost other than the duplex spring itself. Whereas if the duplex spring on my hand piece breaks, then I'm gonna to have to replace the whole hand piece. Another very, 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 very important thing to know is that these should never be run at high speed. 5,000 RPM is the maximum. So that means that you either need to use the LX motor, which only goes up to 5,000 RPM, but is also high torque. So it is definitely the ideal machine for your hammer hand pieces. The other option you have is to use the SR motor with a benchtop control unit. So when you get your hammer hand piece, it is going to come with one anvil point. Now I have two sets here that are nearly identical. I have one that's missing out of this set. It's probably over in another one of my machines. But in this one, you'll notice that some of these look a little bit different. For instance, here is my round top one or my cylinder. Notice that this one is black, it's flat, and there's no shape to this. This is a blank. This is what I have done with that blank. I have gone through and I've shaped it as well as put kind of a semi polish on it. I take these to about a 400 grit finish. Now this little guy started out as a square. And again, I've gone through and reshaped these. So when you get these anvil points, they are blanks. They are ready for you to alter them to be whatever it is that you need to. And don't be afraid to do that. Now I have a couple of videos that show how to do the altering on these and I'll link those up at the top as well as in the description of this video. Today I'm going to be setting this cabochon into the setting that I've already created for that. First thing I need to do is get my stone set into place. And now we're ready to set this. To start with, I need to install my anvil point. In this case, I've used this rounded cylinder point. So I'm going to take this and screw it into the tip of the hammer hand piece. Now, in order for this to really stay where it needs to, there's a hole in here. The hand piece as well as the sets are going to come with one of these pins. And I'm going to just insert that into the tip and just give a little bit of a tightening tug right there you don't want to tighten it in too much, but we also don't want it to come undone on us as we're doing the hammering. Next thing I need to do is get this installed onto my shaft. So I'm going to rotate just a little bit, really slow, and that's going to help seat it into place. And then I can click that. And now we are ready to go. I have this put into a ball vise, but you can hold this any number of ways. Anytime I have a stone that has a point on it, I'm going to set that point first. So I'm gonna very, very gently just come in and bring this down to my stone right here at that point. From there, I'm going to do like I would a normal stone. So maybe I come and hit some bottom points and then some top points. It doesn't matter, but I want to just kind of go around that stone evenly and in opposite directions or opposite points. Now notice that I'm going really slow here and some people choose to go really fast and you can. There's no 
right or wrong on that. It's just what you prefer to have. Now, I like to make certain that I stay in good control as I'm doing this. So now that I've got multiple points set, my stone, there's no rocking, there's no moving, nothing like that. Now I can kind of just start to bring this um, along. I like to work away from a point, and like I said, I always set that point very first. Anytime I have a point, if I were to bring this to the point, I'm going to bring too much metal up here and it's going to be really hard and I won't be able to get that to lay down nice and smooth around that point. Always set your corners first. Okay, now that I've got that, I'm going to come in. Now notice that with this ball, it allows me to rotate this so that I am in line with my, my hand piece here. I don't want to have to come up like this because if I do, look at the angle that puts on my flex shaft. And that's what we need to really be careful of. By doing this with a ball, I'm able to bring the angle to the right place without placing too much uh, bend on this duplex spring. I don't want to hit the stone. I don't want to hit directly on the side. I want to bring that bezel down and against that stone. So I work at about a 45 degree angle bringing that down and in towards my stone. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start here at the top of the stone and I'm just going to bring this down and around this way. So again, I'm going to just kind of come in and just work my way very, very gently and making certain that I'm only hitting that bezel. And then you can see it's now laid down really nicely, whereas up here we still have some bumps and ridges. So I'm going to rotate this around and I'm gonna do the same thing, but again, I'm gonna stop at, or start at the point of the stone and work away from that. And again, we now have it where it's laid down evenly on both sides, but down here on the bottom, we're still a little bit ragged and we still have some openings and spaces there that need to be taken care of. So I'm gonna come here at the bottom. I'm gonna come directly on the bottom and just kind of lay some of this stuff down that was sticking out a little bit further. And now I'm going to take this and I'm just gonna rotate around the bottom of the stone. And now we have that laid down nice and neat. So I did this with that cylinder that I've altered, but I have another one that I also really like. This is a bezel rocker. So once again, I'm going to screw this in and then I will tighten this. And now what I'm going to do is bring this back into my stone and I'm gonna go all the way around my stone with this. And again, I'm gonna start at the point and just work my way around the stone. All right. At that point, everything is looking really, really nice. I've got it nice and smooth all the way around. I am now done. Again, there's no rocking that's happening in the stone. There's no moving. I haven't hit my stone. So we're pretty good here. All that's left to do now is my final polish and any bright cutting if I choose to do that. So two things here. I know I make that look ridiculously simple and that's just because I have done a lot of these. I also went very, very, very slow. You don't have to go that slow, but I did because I had the strike on this set to be a little bit stronger or harder. And I can loosen that up so that my hits are not quite as hard. So there's this ring here on the handpiece, and if you screw it one way, you're going to loosen it and you screw it the other way, it's going to tighten. So to tighten it, I'm going to go clockwise and to loosen, I'm going to go, or to make that a little softer hit, I'm gonna go counterclockwise. So you do have the ability to control how hard this hits as well. If you're using an SR motor, the hit is not going to be quite as strong as if you were using a higher torque machine like the LX machine. Why would I need a stronger hit? 
Well, if I'm working with thicker bezels, those need some more pressure to get them to move. In the case of this bezel, this was a fine silver bezel. It was also really thin, probably about 22 gauge, which is approximately half a millimeter. So very, very thin bezel and it's soft because of fine silver. But sometimes I will use 18 gauge, which is one millimeter. That's a pretty good, strong, thick bezel and they are harder to move and you'll need a little bit more power behind that hit in order to get it to move the way that you want it to. Why would I need it softer? Well, sometimes I'm doing prongs or I'm working around really fragile stones. And at that point, I want to make certain that I don't hit anything too hard and cause it to slip and then hit the stone. So I hope that helps take some of the mystery out of using a hammer hand piece. They're really not as bad as you think they are. And once you get started with it, I'll bet you money that you're gonna be wondering why you hadn't done it sooner. As always, if you like these series of videos, make sure you give us a thumbs up, subscribe and ring that bell. Make sure that you mark that you want all notifications. We will see you guys next time. Have a wonderful day.